Hi everybody, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And this week we're going to talk about the Net Install service that's built into Mountain Lion Server. Now, Net Install is a service that allows you to create a, an image uh, that you can use to do several things. Uh, you can create a NetBoot image, which allows you to actually boot a, a computer on your network from an image that's on your server. So if you had a uh, image of a computer that you only wanted guest users to use, then they could boot into those computers from that image and wouldn't have access to any of the other files and those kinds of things. Uh, it also has a net install service, which allows you to create uh, an install image so that if you, any of your computers on your network need to reinstall their operating system or if you get a new computer and you want to install the operating system on it, uh, you don't have to have a disk or a drive or, or have them go to the App Store or anything like that. They can just basically install it from an image on your server and that will take care of the installation. And you can even customize the installation to make it the way that you want it. And you also have a net restore option, which is where you can take an image of uh, one of your computers, put it on the server so that if you ever wanted to copy that image or have that image uh, be replicated on another computer, you could do that and it would have all of the details and things that you wanted on that image. Again, it's a snapshot in time, so it's not an ongoing backup that you would do, but it would certainly give you uh, a snapshot of an image of the computer so that you can copy it to a new one. So that kind of gives you an idea of the service. Now, the first thing we need to do to get started before we even look at the interface here is we need to actually uh, download uh, a copy of a uh, install image. And so in this case, since we're using Mountain Lion uh, itself, we're going to get a Mountain Lion image. And so what you want to do is go to the App Store and go to where you've purchased uh, Mountain Lion before. And you can see in my list, I've got it right here. And you want to go and just download this image. So the download will then come up once you've down, started downloading the image, and it's going to take a while to do that. It's uh, the big full uh, install image. You can see here I've got like 42 minutes or so, 40 minutes to go. It's going to fluctuate up and down depending on uh, server traffic. And so I'm going to let this run, and once it's downloaded, then I'll show you how to actually create the image that you're going to use in the net install service. Okay, now once you've downloaded uh, the install image, you'll see it automatically launches and gets ready to install uh, Mountain Lion. Uh, now you don't want to do this. You don't want to do anything with this. You want to actually just go ahead and quit the install. Okay, just say quit and get rid of that. Uh, we're going to uh, pop this down here. And then what you're going to want to do is go into uh, Finder, and you're going to want to go to your Applications folder. And you're going to want to look for the install image uh, for OS 10. And so you're going to see it right here. See how it says install for Mountain Lion. Now what you're going to want to do is control click on that and show package contents and go into contents here. And what you're going to look for is you want to look for the uh, disk image. Okay, uh, yeah, so let's go down here. It's under shared support. And see this where it says install ESD, this package. What you want to do is just copy that. So um, I just use you know, Command C, and maybe just come out to your desk, desktop and Command V. So that it'll copy it there. And so let me move this into the field here. You can see that it's starting to install that uh, onto the desktop. It's going to move that file over. It'll take a couple minutes to do that. Uh, and once that's done, then what we're going to do is mount that image. And I'll show you how to set up the uh, disk image that we're going to use uh, for our net install. So as soon as that's done, I'll come back and show you how that works. Okay, now the file has downloaded. Let me uh, just put uh, the finder down here. And so here's our disk image. And what you're going to want to do is just uh, double click the disk image to mount it uh, because we're going to want the uh, disk image to mount. I'm going to skip the verify here just to get it on the screen. And so this is what it looks like when it's mounted. This is our disk image all set and ready to go. Now, in order for us to actually make the, uh, make the image that we need for net install, uh, what we're going to do is let me, uh, now that that's installed, I'm just going to put that down. Uh, we're going to come uh, in here, click on the server, and up top here in the menu you've got a tool area, and you can see here where it says System Image Utility. You want to click on that, and that's going to bring up the System Image Utility, and what happens is, is it knows uh, that, your, uh, that the disk is, is mounted and ready to go. So you can see here it's got the 10.8.2 install, and uh, it's got that all set and ready to go. Uh, you can see too, I've also got the actual uh, install disk that's showing up here. Uh, but I usually like to do it off of this uh, regular image. Uh, you can probably do it either way. And so you can see the three options that we've got in creating this. We can create a netboot image, which again allows Max to boot over the network with a server-based disk image. 
We've got this one which installs OS 10 over the network from a hosted disk image. Again, if you need to reinstall the operating system. And then you've got Net Store, which is Restore, which is restoring a volume over the network from an Apple software restored disk image. Okay, so that's if we need to do that kind of restore. So what we're going to do is we're going to do this in uh, Net Install uh, Image. And uh, we're going to click Continue. But before we do that, let me just click this Customize here. If you click Customize, let me just agree to the software license. And let me just pull this over here so you can see that uh, what we can do is we can actually customize this uh, disk image to whatever we want to. We can add different things. Now, you can see what it's going to do is create uh, the disk image, a net install one. Uh, it's going to save it to this netboot SPO uh, area. And you can see if I hover over that, it's in your library netboot, netboot SPO. That's where all the images go. Uh, you can set the image name. And so, you know, I've got net install of this. Uh, what I'll probably do is let me just change that. Uh, I would change that to 10.8. But let me, let me leave that for a second because I just want to show you the different things that we can do. Uh, you can add uh, packages and install scripts if you want to. You can add a user account. You can apply system settings. Uh, you can do all kinds of different customizations to this uh, depending on how you want to set it up. Uh, you can filter computer models, for instance. Let me just click on that. So that if you wanted to, if I were to drag this over here, uh, I could say, hey, only these particular computer models uh, should be used with this particular image. So I can set it up ahead of time that says, hey, if it's, uh, if it's an older disk image of 10.6, let's say, uh, that only works on certain uh, types of computers. I want to only have those types of computers use that image because everybody else I want to use Mountain Lion. And so you can set this up. And when we create the disk image then, whatever you check here, whatever you set up, those things will be true. So that only those types of computers will be the ones that can access this particular disk image. So it gives you that option. Uh, you can partition the disk. And so you kind of got this nice little uh, disk utility that shows up. And you can say, hey, before we install this, I want to partition the disk automatically. I'm going to make it one partition or two, uh, whatever you want to do, so that it'll erase the disk first and then install it. So you can put that in here. And that's kind of a nice uh, feature, too, uh, if that's what you typically do when you uh, have fresh installs. And so it just gives you the option to set these things up ahead of time. So what's really neat is it makes it nice and versatile for you to set up a disk image. You can customize it uh, to whatever you want to see happen on it. And it gives you a lot of options to do that. Uh, what I'm going to do is just go back, because I'm not going to customize it. I'm just going to say Continue. And then it asks you for the settings. So the network disk and the description. Okay, and, uh, and so on here, this is the name that's going to be displayed on the startup disk. And so what I'm going to say is net install uh, Mac OS, and I'm just going to put 10.8 so I know what it is, what's, what's being installed there. Even though it's a little bit in these descriptions, I want it up there. And it says this image will be served from more than one server. So if you've got multiple servers, you can have this image available on all of those servers if you wanted to. But in my case, I don't uh, want to do that. I'm just going to uh, set it up this way. And then I would click uh, Create and it will go about creating the disk image. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to skip that part just for the sake of time and I'm going to actually uh, shut down uh, the system image utility because I've already got a, a disk image that's set up in the server and I want to show you that. Let me just move this over. So let's talk about the settings in net install now just so that you know how to get that set before you get it started. So you can see here right away in the settings you have access and you can enable it on Ethernet or not and so uh, I can click Edit here, and if I've got another interface that's available, like maybe multiple Ethernet interfaces, if you've got multiple servers, uh, you could try it over on, on a Wi-Fi interface if your server's on that. I wouldn't recommend that, but uh, you could do that. That would show up here if you had that already set up. Uh, for me, just have the one Ethernet interface, so I'm just going to leave that alone. Uh, I can also restrict access to the images. And so if I click Restrict, I can restrict by MAC address. And if I just click the plus button here, it's going to ask me to add a MAC address in. And I can say, hey, only compute these particular, very specific computers have access to this disk image. So that, that way I can make sure that I limit it if I'm really concerned about who has what. Uh, I'm not, so I'm just going to cancel that. Uh, and then I can actually also edit, edit the story, uh, storage settings. So I can come in here and say, uh, here are the volumes where this data could be stored. And I can actually add in here, um, you know, client data, images only, image and client, client data. If I want to move it to different drives, I can say, here's where this information needs to be stored. As you can see right now, I've got it on my uh, server hard drive. And it says the images are going to be placed in here, like I showed you earlier, library netboot in the netboot SPO. That's where your image will be. And then any client data that needs to go with that in terms of who's logged in, who's used it, and those kinds of things go here in the netboot clients folder. And that's sitting right on my uh, right on my main uh, server hard drive. But you 
can move that around if you want to right here with this setting. I'm going to cancel that. Now, that takes care of the settings here. Now I go to the images and what happens is all of the images that I set up will show up here. And you can see I've got a net install image right here that, uh, that I used just by the process I showed you in creating it. It's got a green light, which means it's ready to be served up, that people can access it once I turn on the service. It's ready to go. Uh, this particular one that I did was on uh, for a Lion, uh, a Lion install. Uh, let me just click the little gear down here, and you can actually uh, determine whether you want to use it as the default boot image, and that's important if you have a whole bunch of them lined up here. Uh, you can determine which one is the default. I only have one. Uh, and I can edit the image settings right here, and basically just say, how do I want it available? Now, one way to tell, if you look up here, you can see it's a 10.7 install, like I told you before. This is an image I had created before. And like I said, for speed, I just didn't do the other one, so I can show you how this works. Uh, so you can have multiple images from different operating systems uh, that you have installed here. And if you have computers that uh, will still use some of the legacy stuff. And so that's what makes this really uh, kind of a neat way to, to make it work. Uh, on availability, you can make it available over NFS, uh, which is the regular file share. Okay, network file share, or, or, or over HTTP, which would be more over an internet interface. Uh, again, on your own network, I'd recommend the network file share. Uh, I found it's just a little bit faster and, and more efficient, so I'm just going to leave that alone. Now, in terms of access, I can determine who I want the uh, image visible to. If you remember, I showed you that in the software update, but here I can say uh, all Mac models are only some. And then I get a list of all the different Mac models that Apple's created, and I can say, hey, only uh, certain computers have access to this. And I can check off all the ones and say only computers that try to get it that are in this range or these particular ones are the ones that can access it. So what's neat, again, is you can limit different disk images to different types of computers so people don't make a mistake and try to install uh, you know, 10.8 on a legacy Mac. Instead, they only get the image that their particular computer can use. So it, uh, it gives you that kind of uh, refinement that you can put in there. Uh, I can also then say, yeah, say you restrict this disk image, and again, I can restrict it to only Mac addresses. And so I have the ability again to do that restriction there, just like I showed you before. Cancel that. And then in the advanced area, you have an image index. If you want to index them, you can actually put your own index. Uh, in there to distribute the load. Uh, like if you have multiple uh, net install servers, um, the image index is used to say, okay, this particular one I can spread it across servers to make it more efficient uh, in the install. Again, that's advanced for a home user. You're not really going to use that, so you can just leave it at the default of whatever it is. Uh, once you've done those settings, you can click done and it's all set. I'm just click cancel because everything is fine the way that I've got it. Then in the final area here, you have a connections area where you'll be able to see uh, who has connected to your net install image, uh, what the status is, if they've updated it or not, has their IP address and everything, and then their progress in terms of the install. So that if people are installing packages, you can monitor how that's going for them to make sure that things are going smoothly, especially if you're uh, a network administrator and you've got multiple people accessing the image. So it really makes it uh, nice that you can just see everything right here in the server app. So when you're done, you just basically throw the switch, turn the service on, and then now your image is available. And uh, probably in a future screencast, I'll show you how to actually uh, access that image to do those installs uh, so you get a feel for it. So that's all I have for this week on NetInstall. Like I said, it's a really neat service, especially now that uh, the uh, you know CD drive is gone, so that uh, the install disks are a little harder. You know, you've got to create your own uh, you know a drive disk, you know, to to import those things to install them. You know, whether it's a thumb drive or whatever. This way, you don't have to do that. People can just access it on your server and actually do the uh, reinstalls themselves through this process. So. Uh, again, really neat service. So that's all I have for you this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac.